Facebook page where you can sign up. A quick note, don't forget to sign up for attendance at our evening holiday services coming up this week already. These will be held only in person. So we are asking people to RSVP for the early or late service. I think it's 6.30 and 8, both days, for winter solstice and Christmas Eve. There are links in the UUC newsletter, UU Connections, for watching, for those watching online today. Thank you all for joining us in person and on Facebook and Zoom. Johnson, RE coordinator, and I just wanted to let everyone know that we are having a congregational hike at Beaver Creek Reserve after service today at 1230. So we're going to uh, have lunch real quick and then ourselves, not together, <laughs> and then we'll meet up at Beaver Creek Reserve and we'll hike around in the woods and then we'll go home. <laughs> I also want to thank everyone for uh, helping out with the holiday gift shop last weekend. We raised over $300 for the RE program, so thank you everybody. <laughs> thank you for everyone who helped out at the gift shop. Thank you everyone who donated. Uh, thank you everyone who sent your little ones down with, with money to, to purchase things. Um, it really meant a lot to us uh, to let the kids do this again this year. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As December opens up before us, we welcome in the gift of reflection. We turn toward our holiday celebrations and search for common threads of meaning. We begin with Yule, the winter solstice, and we are invited to explore duality, cycles, and seasons, and to witness the Holly King being overcome by the Oak King. Yule reminds us that we all partake in the miracle of renewal. Hanukkah, the festival of lights, commemorates a time of miracles when the faith of the Jewish people sustained them to reclaim their holy temple and keep the light of the menorah burning for eight days. Christmas, the celebration of Jesus' humble birth in a manger, offers us to revisit the miracle of birth 
and the desire to find saviors to heal the scars of humanity. Here in our congregation, you are just as much a holiday miracle as the turning of the earth, as persistence and dedication to a faith, as the creation of each new life. We see the love you give to others, the space you create to hold one another's joys and sorrows, and the generosity and spirit you entrust to this community. You are the holiday miracle. This community is one of miracle makers. Good morning. Please join me in reading the words for lighting the chalice. In the snow, with only their upper body visible, a person holds a lit sparkler. If ever there were a time for a candle in the darkness, this would be it. Using a spark of hope, kindle the flame of love, ignite the light of peace, and feed the flame of justice. Can you please join me in the reading for, of Nurture This Precious Light, which will be your response, and I'll let you know with my hand. How shall we begin to live our free faith? When we do, we are beacons of freedom, creating a safe place to rest, explore, and innovate. Nurture this precious light. How we keep this lamp of truth and justice affects how and whether we are transforming inequity through witness and action. Nurture this precious light. As we nurture this precious light together, we become a light of hope, turning isolation into community, anguish into peace, and sorrow into joy. As we do, our faith burns a steady flame of innovation, banishing illusion, creating a new and renewing way together. With our living connections, with our glowing stories, with our flame of freedom moving hand to hand, we Together we turn this world from bleak to bright, one flame, one fire, one light at a time. Light. <laughs> Our Sacred Fire by Elizabeth Harding. People have always known that fire was special. Long, long ago, before people made matches or candles or even made houses, people knew that fire was special. There was the great fire in the sky, the sun, which made the earth warm and made night into day. And there were the smaller fires that people made, fires that cooked their food and kept them warm and brought them light. People honored the fires because fire was special. Fire was more than human. Fire has power. It can create and it can destroy. It can bring light and it can burn. Fire can be wonderful and fire can be terrible. We have to be careful with fire. And so, People thought that fire was something sacred and holy. Some people even worshipped fire and said that fire was a deity, like a goddess or a god. Other people said fire wasn't actually the deity, but just meant that the deity was there. No matter what they believed, people all over the world gave fire a special place in their religions. They had fires in their homes, of course, to cook food and keep warm. And they also had sacred fires in their temples. They set sacred lamps on their altars. They lit sacred bonfires outside on the hilltops and in the groves. 
They placed sacred torches near the graves of those who died. We still do this today. In Washington, D.C., near the tomb of the unknown soldier, burns an eternal flame that never goes out. In churches at Christmas time, many Christians light four candles on an Advent wreath. During the eight days of Hanukkah, Jews light the eight candles of the menorah. At Diwali, Hindus set small lamps all around the house. And when Unitarian Universalists gather, we light a chalice. This is our sacred fire. Good morning, I'm Jen Monroe, and this is my daughter, June. Lighting candles. Our own Unitarian symbol of the chalice is a symbol of religious freedom from the impositions of doctrine. At the opening of the Unitarian Universalist worship services, many congregations light a flame inside a chalice. This flaming chalice has become a well-known symbol of our denomination. It unites our members in worship and symbolizes the spirit of our work. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe each and every person is important. Um, we believe all people should be treated fairly. We believe in working for a peaceful, fair, and free world. We believe in caring for our planet Earth. The flaming chalice combines two archetypes, a drinking vessel and a flame, and as a religious symbol has different meanings to different beholders. As a sacrificial fire, flame has been a central symbol for the world's oldest scriptures. The Vedic hymns of India, today lights shine on Christmas and Hanukkah, eternal flames stand watch at monuments and tombs, and candles flicker in cathedrals, temples, mosques, and meeting houses. A flame can symbolize witness, sacrifice, testing, courage, and illumination. On the night of Diwali, Hindus celebrate the return of the light by placing oil lamps on their rooftops. To encourage the sun to shine, homes are decorated with plant materials, such as banana and mango leaves and flowers of the season. Diwali, meaning a ray of lights, is a Hindu light festival. It symbolizes the triumph of light over darkness. It is one of the most important celebrations in India. Although it was originally a Hindu celebration, Diwali is now enjoyed by people of every religion in India. It is a family celebration which takes place in October or November and lasts for five days. This festival of light celebrates the victory of good over evil and the glory of light. People decorate their homes, light thousands of lamps, and give out sweets. There are fireworks in the streets.
Good morning. I am Sue Beetle Sism, she, her. This is my family, my wife, Jen, she, her, and Mark, he, him. Um, and we are going to talk about Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the Jewish festival of lights celebrated in countries all over the world. In 165 BC, there was a great battle between the Maccabees and the Syrians. The Jews won the battle, and there was a <clears throat> and when they went to their temple, they found that the Syrians had allowed their sacred light to go out. They only had oil for one day. The miracle of Hanukkah is that the oil lasted eight days until a messenger could return with more. There are nine candles in the menorah. One of them, the shamash, is used to light the other candles. The other eight stand for the eight days that the oil kept burning. The shamash means to serve. The call to help and serve our brothers and sisters and siblings from all around the world. After Jen and Mark light the shamash, we're going to sing the, one of the prayers. You don't want to? Okay, that's okay. Ready? Yep. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher kitshanu bo mitzvotav V'tzivanu lahad leknev Okay, so Mark and Jen are going to light the candles. And we load our, our menorah from left to right, and because Hebrew is read from right to left, I'm sorry, and then light it left to right. So candle number one represents the source of our highest values, including peace, liberty, and justice for all. Candle two represents the wisdom and insight of great religious teachers from many cultures and lands. Candle number three represents the need for justice at home and abroad. Candle number four represents the exercise of mercy in the face of cruelty. Five, the holiness, the wholeness of individual life. Six, the centrality of love in bringing about world community. Seven, the role of patience amidst the misunderstanding that inevitably arises from interaction with the unfamiliar. And eight, the courage needed to build relationships with people who look and think differently than we do. It's beautiful to see the lights coming up. We are reminded that the light will indeed return. Now is a time in our service where we move to meditation. I'm the Reverend Julianne Lepp, and I'm so glad that we can be gathered today in person and online and on Facebook. Ours is a spiritual community where we find and forge connection. We trust in the strength of mutual support, knowing how it has sustained us day after day and year after year. I'm going to invite you to recall the names of persons or places you are holding in your hearts, either as a source of concern or a cause for celebration. This is a little bit different. Normally we invite people to come up and light a candle and share a joy or concern. This is going to be more like a cacophonous prayer. <laughs> You're going to say it aloud. Those that are on Facebook or Zoom will share it in their chat and that'll be sent to me and I will read it aloud. And so as you feel moved, I invite you to say aloud the names of those persons or places in our shared space that cause you celebration or concern. My dad. 
my mother-in-law. Syria, Afghanistan refugees, overloaded hospitals, frontline workers, joyful holiday celebrations. I share from Zoom, Dad, my nephew. From Facebook, celebration for Heather and Chris, concern and love for the town of Stanley. Those not vaccinated, those who are vulnerable, from Zoom. Lift up Alan Jackson, Carol Brainerd, those names that have been heard and honored together in this community. We lift up Jennifer, Jessica, Emily, Amanda, Cat, Jeremy, siblings close to my heart, Bob, Laurel, Victoria, Kate, and all the teachers, thank you. So I invite you to put your hand on your heart. <laughs> if you wish, hold the love that we carry, the light that we carry within ourselves, and know that you are surrounded in this community if you'd like to join me with the words found in your order of service. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant, dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Each Sunday, we give half of all non-pledge donations to nonprofit organizations that work to help others. You may give cash or make checks payable to UUC and indicate on the memo line whether it is for a pledge payment or today's 50-50 recipient, which is the Bolton Refuge House. With gratitude for the abundance in our lives, we give to help people in need and to help support the work of this congregation.
Please join me in reading the response printed in your order of service for giving. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. This is a meditation on winter celebrations by Elizabeth M. Strong. We are in the midst of the season of celebration. The celebrations are of the birth of new hope, of the festival of lights, of the triumph of freedom. The darkness of the year is lifting and very soon the time of light grows longer. We have gathered with an anticipation of hope for peace on earth and in our homes. We have gathered in this season of celebration seeking comfort to soften the pain and the losses our lives have suffered in the fast retreating year. We have gathered to worship joyfully within this season of celebrations with the tenderness and love of family and friends around us. Let us be embraced by the strength and power of this sacred place that we each bring as we create this beloved community. Let joy and sorrow join in the fullness of our living. Let the power and strength we embody join us together as we move through the seasons of celebration into a new year and with a new vision of hope for peace on earth. Let us be silent together. Buddha Day, or the Vesak Festival, celebrates three major events in the life of Buddha, his birth, enlightenment, and his death passed away in the full, and the celebration is in the full moon of the sixth lunar month, May. It's the most important festival in the Buddhist lunar calendar. Buddhist festivals are a time of joy. They gave Buddhists an opportunity to meet together to take the three refuges, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and learn more about the Buddhist teachings. Families bring food, candles, and flowers to the monks and the monasteries. And in return, the monks chant the scriptures, lead a period of meditation, and give teachings on the themes of the festival. There's a party feel to this whole celebration. Um, Houses and streets are cleaned and decorated with Buddhist flags and flowers. And in villages, when it's dark, the Buddhists gather around the statues of the Buddha. They walk around the statue with candles till all is covered in light. During the Vesak celebration, an image of the newborn Buddha in the gesture of pointing to the truth is usually displayed in the shrine room. Buddhists use light, candle, and, or butter lamps to celebrate vesics, to recall that the Buddha showed people how to become enlightened. Amy Johnson again, RE coordinator. I use she, her pronouns, and this is my son, Sam Johnson. He uses he, him, and we are gonna light the Yule log. The pagan celebration of the winter solstice, also known as a Yuno, is one of the oldest winter celebrations in the world. Good job. 
ancient people were hunters and spent most of their time outdoors. The seasons and weather played a very important part. Uh, played a very important part in their lives. Because of this, many ancient people had a great reverence for and even worshipped the sun. The Norsemen of Northern Europe saw the sun as a wheel that changed the seasons. It was from the word for this wheel, wool, that the word Yule is thought to have come. At midwinter, the Norsemen I lost my place. At midwinter, the Norsemen lit bonfires, told stories, and drank sweet ale. In Egypt, one of the early winter solstice celebrations was an extravagant party to celebrate the rebirth of Horus, the god who appeared in the sky as a fiery orb each day. The same orb we know today as the sun. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Good catch. Buildings were decorated with greenery, and the celebrations lasted 12 days. The Greeks also celebrated the solstice. Each Greek family burned a log for the duration of the festival to keep monsters at bay. Romans subsequently decorated their homes and halls with laurel boughs. They lit candles and to chase away evil spirits and build bonfires on hilltops. Gift giving became a part of the holiday. You gotta stop. You gotta stop that. <laughs> he has plastic, and I'm afraid it's catching on the microphone. <laughs> With the spread of the Roman Empire, the popularity of the winter festivals spread. Much has changed as these festivals have been personalized, reinvented, reimagined. Yet each one is still, in its own special way, a festival that bids goodbye to darkness and welcomes the light. At winter solstice, we know the light will return. The Advent wreath is used in many Christian congregations to mark the Sundays until Christmas. This Advent lighting focuses on the teachings of Jesus. The first candle is for hope. Hope comes as we talk with each other and realize our common experiences, our humanity, our caring, reassurances of our own worth, given and received. The second candle is for love. We cannot go back into isolation once we have given or received love. Love is the creative force. The third candle is for joy. Joy is the celebration of the creation and of life itself. The fourth candle is for peace. Peace is respect, justice, and goodwill. Peace is a feeling of harmony. One of Jesus' great teachings was that we should love our neighbor as ourselves and do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Unitarian Universalists have a long tradition of following these words, reaching out to help others who are less fortunate and trying to bring peace and justice all over the world. What can we do in our daily living which makes us peacemakers? Our faith in the our faith in the worth and dignity of every person and the power of love influences our thoughts and actions daily in many small ways, leaving the world a more peaceful and loving place. The final candle is the light of Christmas and the hope for peace and light in the world. You might have noticed that the light is growing. <laughs> this reading is a candle for the Islamic faith, and I want to thank uh, Violet um, Ibrahim, who helped me 
get this more correct. <laughs> One of the things we do as Unitarian Universalists is try and honor our sources of wisdom, which you're hearing from today. There are two Eids. The second is Eid al-Adha. Some considered Eid al-Adha as more important because it is celebrated during the Hajj. It is about Ibrahim or Abraham's willingness to sacrifice to Allah. Both Eids are celebrated sim similarly. We will light this candle on our table for those who celebrate Eid al-Adha, which is celebrated during the Hajj, and also Eid al-Fatur, which is at the end of the month of Ramadan. And it celebrates a successful completion of the fast as a way to celebrate the revelation of the Quran. The early part of the day, and this might sound familiar to some of the things that we do here at home as well, the early part of the day is offering prayers with meals. Children particularly enjoy presents and money that is given. It is sunnah, the way of the Prophet Muhammad, that everyone should wear new and beautiful clothes and rejoice with other Muslims. And this is a translation of uh, Surah An Nahor, the light from the Quran. Allah is the light of the heavens and earth. His light is like this. There is a niche and in it a lamp, the lamp inside a glass, a glass like a glittering star, fueled from a blessed olive tree from neither west nor east, whose oil gives light even when there is no fire that touches it. Light upon light, Allah guides whoever he wishes with his light, and he makes examples for people to understand. Allah is all-knowing. And finally, it is um, important that Muslims give to the poor and needy before they eat prayers and they enjoy the day. Kwanzaa was created by Dr. Malana Ron Karenga, I apologize for any mispronunciations in this, a professor of black studies in 1966. At this time of great social change for African Americans, Karenga sought to design a celebration that would honor the values of ancient African cultures and inspire African Americans who were working for progress. Kwanzaa is based on the year-end harvest festivals that have taken place throughout Africa for thousands of years. The name comes from the Swahili phrase, Matunda Ya Kwanza, which means first fruits of the harvest. They give thanks not only for the harvest, but also the blessing of living and working together in community. Makeka, the, the makeka is a straw mat on which all their items for celebration are placed. It symbolizes tradition as the foundation on which all else rests. Venara, the Venara is a seven candle candelabra which represents the firstborn, the symbolic first stalk of corn from which all life has come. The ever producing and reproducing stalk of corn symbolizes a people without end. Mishuma, the Mishuma are seven candles representing the seven principles for living in society. The seven principles are unity, self-determination, work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. This reading is Every Third Thursday by Joanna Fontaine Crawford. Every third Tuesday, I am a Buddhist. I empty my mind and lighten my heart and try to let go of attachments. Every other Friday, I am a Christian. I look for the least of these and try to love God and my neighbor. 
The full moon of the month finds me Wiccan. I honor the dual nature of God and find my rhythm as maiden, mother, or crone. On the 15th of the month, I am humanist. I respect science, integrity of fellow humans, and all that we have learned and have made. Every fourth Wednesday, I am Hindu. I take a breath and understand that what is unfinished now will remain for me to continue next life. On alternate Fridays, I am Jewish. Yevarecha Adonai Vayishmarecha. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. <laughs> I tell my children, softly touching each head. And the Thursdays and the Mondays and the Saturdays and Sundays and all the other days in between find me reading or listening or watching. Philosophers, Muslims, Mormons, Baha'i, and more fill my heart, touch my soul. And yet, the one thing that none of these provide to me is the certitude that they are the one. They lend me wisdom, sing to my heart, cause me to question, help me to find answers, make me more me. And at the end of the day, every day, I am Unitarian Universalist. In parcel and in pledge and with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind and all my strength, I honor this faith. I hold it close as it lets me run free. Please join me in these words for extinguishing the chalice today. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Let us enjoy this light, this example that there are many truths, light that shines through windows, just like our stained glass window up here, might show us different refractions at different times of day, different wisdom, different truths or understandings. And through the light, it gives us hope to carry on even in these difficult times as one community that lifts up our diversity of belief, of people, of identity, but held by a love that understands that just because we all are different or believe differently means that we can still be one community. And we can honor that in each other, in our world, and in our schools, and in our friends. So I'm gonna close with these words which is share your glorious light with the world. Share your glorious light. Within each of our hearts is a most glorious light. Go forth and let spark and let its spark help you understand what troubles both you and others. Go forth and let it be the light of reason to guide your decisions. Go forth and bring a ray of hope to those in need of both body and spirit that need to find healing. Go forth and fan, uh, fan the flames of passion to help heal our world. Spread the glow of love, pushing back the darkness, and share your glorious light in the world. Go forth. And we are going to be closing our time with our Zoom and Facebook friends. Thank you to everyone who has joined us online and for those who are present with us today.